Hello. In this video, we are going to look at the acidity of three types of hydrocarbons, alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes in the gas phase. Hello. In this video, we are going to look at the allylic structure, particularly the allylic cation in SN1 and SN2 reactions. Suppose we start with this compound, 3-chloro-1-propene, in some protic polar solids. We know that it's possible for it to ionize, and we get the following structures. So this is a cation with a positive charge. Plus, as expected, we have separation of the chloride as the anion. This particular cation is called the allylic cation. And we recognize that we have a double bond between two carbons, and we also have a single bond between two carbons. Let's look at the Lewis structure of this particular species. So we notice that we have a double bond between these carbons. The hydrogens are obviously single bound to carbon. Then we're going to draw a single bond between this carbon and the third carbon. And this is a valid Lewis structure. On the other hand, with the same arrangement of atoms, so let's put the atoms in first to show that we're going to do this without the atoms moving. I can make a double bond between the center carbon and the rightmost carbon now. And now we're going to put a single bond between the left and the center carbon. This also has a positive charge. So we see that merely by moving the electrons around, in the left case we have the double bond on the left side, and in this one we have the double bond on the right side. Without moving the atomic positions, since we can write two valid Lewis dot structures, that means that neither one of these structures is the actual correct structure, but it is actually some sort of average of these two. We recall that whenever we can write two distinct structures with the same arrangement of nuclei, just moving the electrons around, that this is an instance of resonance. So we see that the true allylic cation will have the effect of each of the carbon-carbon bonds here being exactly the same length. And we can kind of notice the symmetry of the molecule that the left-hand side is exactly like the right-hand side. And instead of either a single bond or a double bond, each of these carbon-carbon bonds is intermediate, effectively like a one and a half bond. And because of resonance, we imagine that this particular cation will be particularly stabilized, more than it would be as a simple primary cation, which is, as we've drawn it here, we'd imagine it to be, and this uh, with a positive charge on the left-hand carbon, 
but it can be a primary cation. But the allylic cation is resonance stabilized, so it is more stable than a primary cation, and therefore more likely to form. It will form more quickly in solution. Please see the following two figures to see computed uh, three-dimensional structures of the allylic cation, first from the top and second edge on to show that it is, in fact, planar. Now, if we would start again with our 3-chloro-1-propene, and we wanted to undergo an SN1 reaction, we recall that the first step in an SN1 reaction is ionization. So you have formation of a carbocation and the leaving group leaves, taking its electrons with it. So the expected result would seem at first to form a primary carbocation. And we know that the likelihood of the formation of primary carbocations in solution is virtually nil. So we might imagine that this reaction from an SN1 point of view could not occur at all. But what we do know is that this cation is resident stabilized. It's an allylic cation and not an ordinary primary carbocation. Therefore, this has as much likelihood of formation as generally a secondary carbocation. And we know that secondary carbocations, while not as easily formed in solution as tertiary, still will uh, form in solution. So we can expect some reaction by the SN1 mechanism for a secondary carbocation and as well for a allylic carbocation. We could summarize this ease of carbocation formation uh, from what we know already. We know that tertiary is more likely than secondary, more likely than primary. And now we can include allylic as approximately, depending upon the circumstances, the same ease of formation as a secondary carbocation. Please see following a table which shows the enthalpy required to generate carbocations in the gas phase, which recall is not exactly the same as in solution, but it provides a com uh, convenient benchmark. And we see in the gas phase, at least, allylic is even slightly more favored than a secondary if we start with allylic chloride or allyl bromide as our uh, substrates. For the remainder of the video, we want to see how the allylic structure affects SN2 reactions. Now recall that for SN1, the primary uh, determinant of how fast the reaction takes place is the ease of formation of a carbocation. For SN2, the relevant parameter is steric hindrance. So we can compare two reactions. In the first reaction, we have allyl chloride. And in the second case, we have one chloropropane, or one propyl chloride. In each case, we have an SN2. The nucleophile is going to be bromide ion. The leaving group is going to be chloride. So we know that in each case, chlorine leaves with its electrons. And then it's replaced by bromide. Similarly, in the case with the propyl chloride, we have effectively the same sort of reaction taking place, but now the bromine is adding at the end of a propyl group rather than an allyl group. 
Because each of these has roughly the same steric hindrance, we would predict, and we'd be correct, and calculations bear this out, that the allylic structure is roughly as uh, suitable for SN2 reactions as the saturated propyl uh, substrate. And in fact, we see in some cases that there's a slight advantage for the allylic structure. It may be just the fewer hydrogens attached, even if, though it's not at the exact uh, reaction point of the transition state, is sufficient, at least in the gas phase, to make this very slightly preferable to this case. But the important thing is that as far as SN2 goes, the allylic structure is roughly the same uh, rate of reaction as we have for a primary uh, substituted Lieben group. So please see the following computed transition states of for reactions of various nucleophiles with allyl structures and with uh, one propyl structures to see the relevant parameters. Please see the final uh, table listing the uh, energies of activation for the transition states for a series of nucleophiles, the nucleophiles including halides and cyanide ion on allylic structures and then on one propyl structures 
and we'll also see some computer structures for the resulting products. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a go.